Hey coders, I'm Cody and welcome to learning the basics of regex in JavaScript. So to start off, what is regex, right? Regex is a way to match certain patterns inside of a string. So for instance, if you have a string, all your base are belong to us, and you want to test does base exist in the string, you can do that with regex. So just to show you that, I'll say all your base are belong to us. And if I want to test if base belongs in the string, I can just do the regex expression slash base slash end. And notice here, we're using regex101.com, which I highly recommend. It's like the best online uh, regex tester to kind of learn to get your hands wet with regex. So again, we type the regex expression base in our test string, and you see that it highlights in blue, so we know that our regex passes. So how do you do this in JavaScript? Well, first of all, you'd want to declare um, a string called all your base or belong to us. Secondly, you declare some type of regex expression. So you start that with a slash, a forward slash, type in your regex expression, base, and then end it with the following slash. And then lastly, if you wanted to test to see if base belongs in our string, we can say is existing, and we can say regex.test against our string, and go ahead and print out is existing. I'll save that file, and I'll go ahead and run regex.js, and we see that it prints out true. So again, very similar to the app on the right. If the blue shows up in this string, it's a true. And if it doesn't show up, it's going to be false, right? So just to demonstrate that, I'll go ahead and get rid of base. I'm going to rerun regex.js and see that it prints out a false down here. So again, that's the real basics. Just how do you test to see if a certain substring exists in a larger string? So we show that in regex101.com. And we're also showing it in JavaScript over here. So now that we learned the basics of testing a string, let's go ahead and learn more complicated regex expressions. So the first thing I'm going to cover is the caret sign and the money sign. So the caret is used to specify the start of the string has to match the regex expression, followed by our string base. And the money sign is used for designating the end of our string. So what does that mean? Basically, it means that our string has to be base, and that's it, right? So all your base are belong to us won't match, but if I change this to base, it passes. Again, to demonstrate how you break that, I'll add an extra character called A. And notice that the money sign expression makes it fail. And if I were to remove the money sign, it passes again. And then again, to demonstrate the caret sign, this thing, it has to start with a base, right? So if I were to change this to Z, this fails, and if I get rid of the caret, it passes again. And again, I'm not going to show this, show how to do this in JavaScript because it's going to be the same. You are pretty much just going to copy and paste it in, and that's how you do it. So a lot of these examples, I'm going to stick to regex 101. Okay, so we learned simple regex expressions for testing. We learned the caret sign, which means cert position at the start of the string, and we learned the money sign, which means a cert position at the end of the string. So some other cool things we can do is let's say we have a string, my name is Cody and my age is 26 or 26, right? Okay. So let's say we wanted to make sure that the string has name is something in it. So again, in your regex, you can say name is, and then what we want to do now is test that there's a array of characters or a length of characters, which are all A through Z. So in this case, we can use something called character classes, and those are designated with square, bra square brackets or square braces. <clears throat> so I can say anything through A through Z lowercase. And notice that this will only match the first C. So with character classes, you need to add some additional options so it can be one or more, which is the plus sign. It can be the star, which means zero or more. There's a couple others, like zero is optional. You don't need to have the C. And then we can also do, let's say we're checking for length. So we want it one to four characters. I can kind of go over those later on. So let's just uh, stick with the basics. So again, we're looking for name is you know, some blank, fill in the blank with whatever name you want. So we're going to go ahead and do a plus sign. 
and then I'll match any name. So if we change this to Bob or Lisa or whatever, it's going to match that. And again, we can do the same thing with ages. So if I would change this to age and then change the character class to zero through nine, one or more, again, any character that we add, which is a digit, should match this regex expression. In the moment we change this to an A or a B or C, it's going to fail. So again, as a recap, we just covered character classes, which again is designated by these open brackets. And inside here, we can add ranges of characters. We can also add, like, let's say we only want it to be 1, 2, or 3 for the age. So notice here, if I do 99, that'll fail. 22 will, will pass. 1, 2, 3 passes. 0, 2 will fail. And you can just mess around with this to kind of make sure you understand what's going on. And then the same thing with name, if we were to go back and say we want A through Z. And then also allow capitalized letters. This will match with capital Cody or lowercase Cody. It doesn't really matter because we're matching any character which has lowercase A through Z or uppercase A through Z one or more. So you can do even more you know, crazy stuff with this. So if you wanted to add you know, alphanumerics into there, we can do so. That'll pass. Let me go crazy with this, read some more documentation on this. But we're again, we're just going to cover the very the basics of regex and using it in JavaScript. We're going to dive deep into how to define more complicated character classes. So again, we covered testing a string for a substring, um, the caret, the money sign, character classes. We covered what the plus means, what the star means, which is zero or more. So again, this will pass if we have nothing. We could just add and. So zero or more characters. This will pass. This will pass. This will pass. In fact, just to demonstrate this, let's get rid of the additional checks. So this this will fail because you know there's no character A through Z here. Um, we can also use the question mark, which allows us an optional Y. So for instance, if we said the Y is optional in my name, this will pass if I have Cody or if I have COD, because the Y or the question mark represents an optional character. And then lastly, I'm not sure if I just covered this, but if I wanted age to be three characters and only three characters, I could say again the character class Z through nine, but in this case I want it to be one to three characters. So one will pass, 12 will pass, one, two, three will pass, but one, two, three, four will fail. And technically it doesn't fail because you're still getting that regex string, but we'll only match it against these first characters. So if you wanted to explicitly end the string, so if I wanted like you know, the end of the character or end of the string, we can just end it with the money sign. And then last thing, if we just wanted to check that it has one character or one digit in it, we could just add one, right? So the age is one. So now that we covered character classes, let's cover a couple of special characters that we can use in regex expressions, which allow us to, instead of having to write like, you know, the character class zero through nine, we can instead just do slash D. So slash D plus means match one or more arbitrary strings of digits. Slash D for, stands for digits. Um, if I do name is, I can do dash slash W, which kind of matches um, just like a name slash w is any word character equal to a through z, capital A through z, zero through nine or underscore. So that's more used for like variables or whatnot. We can test for spaces. So if I wanted to say verify there's a space in here, I can do slash s. So if I don't add a space, it fails. I can test for a new line character. So this will fail unless there's a new line here. And you can do slash T for tabs. And there's a bunch of other ones, but I'm not going to cover all those. All right, so that's really cool. We can test if a string matches a certain pattern. But 
sometimes or most of the times you actually want to extract that string that you found and use it in your program. So for instance, let's say we have a string that says my name is Cody, but we want to actually use the name and store it in a variable inside of our code. So in that case, we can use something called grouping. So I'll go ahead and surround this character class with A through Z, one or more, with parentheses around it. And what grouping allows you to do is in the code, we can say, give me match index one, and we can set that into a variable print that out or do whatever we want. So in JavaScript, how do we actually do that? Again, we can change string to this. My name is Cody. The regex will be the exact same as what we saw here. And now what we can do instead of using the method test, so instead of regex.test, we do regex.exec for execute on this string, and then that will give us a match. So in this case, we can say if match, else console.log no match. And then if there's a match, let's say we just want to print out the name that the person provided. We can say console.log name. We can say const name is equal to match of index one. So if I were to run this, we see that it prints out Cody, right? Because that is the group of index one, which again in regex101.com, we see it's group one. This is the whole blue string is group zero. And then let's say, for instance, you know, we change name to something else. So in here we say Zach. And then we print this out or run this file. Again, it's going to print out Zach. Now, if there is no name, let's just say we have a bunch of characters or digits there for whatever reason. This should print out no match because match is going to be undefined at this point because regex.exec failed. So that's the basics of grouping. So if we wanted to do something a little bit more complicated, so for instance, we have a string of separated file names. So we can say file a dot, I don't know, mp3, we have file 01.mp3, we have file 02.mp3, we have test.csv, and we have other.txt. If we wanted to take apart the string and find everything which matches .mp3 and just grab the grouping of the file name, we could do so like this. So again, we're testing for .mp3, so slash d mp3 and then we want global so in this case we're going to have to add a global flag here to match anything in the string because without the global flag it just matches the first instance and that's it and then let's say the file name is any word like so and we need to extract that so let's go ahead and add a grouping on it so again this regex gives us any file which matches .mp3 at the end, and it also gives us the group of the name. So to use this in JavaScript, let's go ahead and change string up here to our list of file names. Let's update our regex here to be any slash word, one or more, followed by mp3, and then set that to a global. Then we execute that regex on our string like we did before. And now in this case, what we can do is instead of just saying if match, we say while there's a match, match is equal to regex exec string. And I can say const file name is equal to match one. I'll go ahead and run that. Ooh, something. It's because I had that as a const and I need to be able to redefine it. So I'll go ahead and run that again. So notice here it prints out file A, file 01, and file 02. 
So looking at the code, let's you know walk through this and figure out what's going on. Okay, so this we're going to test the regex against the string. And for every time we find anything, it's going to set match equal to the next file that it finds. So that's why we can kind of loop through it and keep calling match equals regex.exec multiple times. So the first step is on line seven, we grab the first grouping, we print out the file name, and then we do it again. We're just going to keep on traversing anything that matches .mp3 multiple times. So again, another recap, we learned how to test regex against a string to see if it something exists in it. And then we also test how to use groupings to extract certain data from the regex. So again, I can go on and on with all the different you know special cases of regex, but I think what the best thing you should do is just keep on trying new things, like think in your head of different string examples or real life scenarios in which you need to extract certain things from a string, save them to a variable, print them out, or store them in something. And then just try different regex expressions to make sure you understand what's going on. Mess around with all the different regex flags you can use, such as, in, let's see, insensitive means case ignore. I don't even know what some of these mean. Um, but honestly, I think the most important ones would be global or case sensitive. And then know that regex kind of applies to any programming language. So as long as you have a good understanding of how to write your regex expressions, you can translate the JavaScript, Python, Ruby, uh, Bash, whatever you want, you can translate regex to. And it really helps you out down the road if you need to do some type of string manipulation or string matching. And I think that kind of wraps up you know, how to use the basic, basics of regex in JavaScript. And uh, again, find other resources if you want a more deep, detailed information about regex. But I think that's a general overview of how to use regex in JavaScript to get most of the things you're trying to do accomplished, at least for beginners. All right. Remember to subscribe and like if you thought this tutorial was pretty good. Be sure to leave feedback and ask any questions in the comment section of the video. And again, thank you so much for watching.